So good morning everyone, or sorry, good afternoon at this stage. Uh, my name is Martin Mitchell and I'm here to talk to you about my job and my job, I'm an ethical hacker. Does anyone know what a hacker is? Breaks into stuff. But the thing about my job is I've got the word ethical in front of it, which means I'm actually allowed to it. So I work for IBM, so I have a quick question for everyone. So when you think about IBM, which of these ones is the odd one out? Hands up, because I have a prize, don't shout it out. Which one of these is the odd one out? Hands. Did you get a prize? Did you get a prize? Yep. Nope. Nope. Yes. IBM stopped making laptops in 2005. And what a lot of people, and a lot of people today, even uh, today, think that IBM still make laptops, but we don't. So for the other ones, Wimbledon. We, ha we do all the we do all the technology behind Wimbledon, like for, for those kind of slow motion, so you know it's like very close to the line or not, or just their vast networks in order to be able to get the, um, the actual broadcasting of all the Wimbledon um, games out. That's all IBM technology. If you have a Xbox or a Nintendo Wii or a PlayStation, the chips inside are all technology based on what work, uh, based on the work that IBM have done. And lastly, Topshop, the e-commerce systems. So their websites, their tills, their sales. So not just Topshop, there's so many stores that we actually do the, the back end for, the, um, for all the retail. So we actually have a lot of technology and a lot of services that we have for, um, for retail. Uh, so they can, so let's say uh, last Monday was Black, was, was it? Was it? So it was Black Friday, Cyber Monday. We monitor all the sales, so we can see peaks and stuff. So, um, I think if you go onto the IBM website today, we have actually the graphs up, and you can see that there was a huge spike in sales, especially for online, uh, specifically last Friday and on Monday. So, what else? So, IBM is a very, very big company. Uh, we've been in Ireland for a very, very long time. Globally, we have over 430,000 employees, um, lots of money, and some Nobel prizes. And last year we celebrated our 100 years, so we had our centenary. So, um, and this is some of the work that we've done. So we've done a lot of work on laser eye surgery chips for computers. And does anyone know what those green and yellow things are? No. Floppy disks. Yes. Some people don't. Um, and uh, calculators and the bark. Does anyone know? What that that was at the end, kind of ruined it, the barcode. IBM invented the barcode, so, IBM, so barcodes are absolutely everywhere nowadays. But what I'm here to talk to you today about is ethical hacking. So, as I said before, main thing is, I, is the word ethical. So IBM give me permission to hack, but not hack every, everywhere. I can't hack Facebook, can't hack Google, don't worry about that. I hack our own software, our own systems. So we build services for our customers, and my job is to try and test these services to the best of my ability to make sure that private sensitive information is not released on the internet. Because could you imagine if all of your Facebook messages, all your private Facebook messages and all your Gmail messages and all your SMS messages, imagine your mother was able to read all those. So it's bad enough your mother is able to read them, but uh, could you imagine they were just copied and pasted and put up on the internet and, you, and anyone can read them. So that's actually where it starts. So that's actually our job. Our job is to make sure that no one can break into uh, the services. Uh, which everyone uses on a um, daily basis. So, before IBM. Before IBM, I was interested in business. Um, so, I started to study business, but then after a while I realized that I didn't really want to do business. I kind of wanted to go more IT. Um, but, before I went to college, there wasn't really IT security or um, uh, hacking courses on. Um, so a lot of my so so a lot of the work that I had to do was actually a lot of self learning. So I was I was researching all the time. I was um, I was reading every single piece of information that I could get. Um, Google was my friend, but 10, 12 years ago, Google is not as good as it was. Sorry, Google it, Google was not as good as it is today. Um, it was it was really painful to try and like find something very very specific on Google. Rather than today, it's really really good. Um, another thing is for me was. Um, since I didn't really have um, like college and stuff to kind of help me with, with uh, 
with my whole security background was I had groups, so I had a group like 2600 was kind of a magazine that was out when I was growing up and uh, a group of us kind of met up and we kind of discussed a lot of the security stuff. Uh, nowadays there's kind of groups like TOG, so they're, they're kind of more for engineers and stuff. Um, where we kind of, so it's not just for security, it's for all types of engineering, whether it's electronics or programming and stuff. Um, so TOG has a lot of like uh, meetups and stuff like that. Um, so what I did was I actually went to I went to college and um, I did a computer science degree, but a lot of the subjects that I did were programming, networking, and operating systems. Um, so just because I wasn't able to find a course that was purely what I wanted to do, because I always knew I wanted to try and do security. So I was studying my networking, my programming, and my operating systems. But outside of college, I was trying to do other activities um, that, would, that, would help my, uh, that would help me learn uh, my security. Well my hopefully future security profession. Um, so I joined IBM in 2010 and um, I did not go straight into an ethical hacking position. I started as, um, I started as a system verification tester. Um, so what a system verification tester does is, you know when you're on a website and you, or so you're on a website or you're on your phone and you're on an app and you click a button and it doesn't do exactly what you think it does. So that's what a system verification tester does. It makes sure that the way a system is designed, it works the way it's supposed to work. So then after about a year, I was able to move into an, uh, I was able to move into an ethical hacking position. So what does an ethical hacker do? So when you access a website, okay, so you have your desktop computer, you access a computer, and that goes off and talks to either a database where your Facebook profile is stored, or all these other things. So I need to make sure that in not just one place, but in all three places. So on your laptop, on the server that's actually talking to, and on the likes of the database and stuff, that all the code that is written and deployed on all of these systems is secure, because the last thing you want is for your server to get hacked. Because if a server gets hacked, then your information gets leaked, and you're annoyed, and it makes us look bad as well. So the reason I test is because the two terms I mainly use for this is black hat and white hat. So. I kind of say it's like the wild, wild west. You kind of have the good guys and the bad guys. So the black hat guys are generally the guys that you hear on the news, the guys that have been arrested for breaking into, um, for like disclosing emails of some business or some country nowadays, as, 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 they're, as they're typically doing, if you heard about Greece lately. Um, so these guys are all just hell-bent on wanting to cause trouble. So they'll break into systems, they'll download all the emails, all the passwords, all the bank account details. And what they'll do is they'll sell them or even if they just don't care, they'll actually just release them online. Because the main thing is, it's gonna make the company look bad. Like if a bank's customer details becomes freely available online, it makes the bank look bad. So what we are is, we're the white hats, we're the good guys. So we, we're, we're trying to make sure our systems um, are secure enough that these guys cannot break into them. Um, and it's a lot of work, so you're not just, so yes, I am sitting in an office and I'm there working away and I'm, um, I'm trying to test these systems, but on the side, I'm also reading up on the latest news, the latest attacks. Uh, sorry, the latest attacks, so I can better prepare myself for when I'm actually testing all these systems. So I can use the same attacks that these black hat guys are actually using against our systems today. Um, and it's not just laptops; it's your mobile phone, because your mobile phone is a computer. Your mobile phone knows more about you than probably your best friend, because all your SM, all your texts are on it, uh, all your Facebook stuff is on it. It knows who you're talking to and when and why and all that kind of stuff. So, as I said, it'd be really, really bad if, you're, if all the information on your phone, on your Facebook, on your Gmail was just publicly available to anybody who wanted to access it. That'd be really bad. So, another thing that we do is, so as I said, we do a lot, a lot of research. Um, for anyone who kind of, who, for anyone um, who's interested in kind of looking at this kind of stuff, the best place to go for is OWASP. OWASP is an organization where a lot of companies contribute to, including ourselves, we have IBM, Google, Microsoft, we all contribute information on all the latest attacks and all the, and, and all the latest ways of protecting uh, yourselves against these attacks. So we come together, so there's no real secrets, um, because if everyone can protect themselves from, from the black hats, it means that it's gonna slow them down a hell of a lot more, and it means they may just go off and get a proper job. Um, so, oh wasp. Picture up there is another thing that we do. So there's, uh, there's events called Capture the Flags. They're on all over the world. And what happens is um, some companies, some, uh, some universities will actually set up a network, will set up some systems, 
and they're designed in such a clever way that it is possible to hack them. And it's similar to your online games uh, where you kind of ground you have to try and shoot each other, but rather than actually trying to shoot each other, what you're trying to do is you're trying to take over a server. So capture the flag games um, are a great way for us to hone our skills as well because we're not just going to be attacking like our own um, our own IBM software every day. It means that we can actually go off and we can see what other people are doing as well. Um, so we're always keeping current. We're always we're, so we're playing capture the flags. We're always contributing to the OWASP and the books is just there because like the amount of stuff that you're reading on a day-to-day -day basis is just amazing. So you're actually always uh, educating yourself for when you're trying to do some uh, security testing. And that's all I have. So does anyone have any questions? If you're too shy, I'll, I'll be sticking around for the next hour so you can find me. Yep. Is there college courses now on? Yes. So nowadays there are college courses. Um, they may not be purely um, ethical hacking or security modules. So they kind of put them as security and forensics. Um, you can do masters in them. Uh, there are some dedicated courses, but there are, um, that are a complete four years. Uh, I know Blanchestown IT, the, uh, the college that I was in before, they certainly have one. But other, other colleges are now, maybe in third year and fourth year of college, they'll give you an option. So you'll do your first two years and then you can migrate into security or into networking or into more uh, development. Yep. Sorry? Uh, I personally don't, but I know guys in other companies like Google and Facebook, and they do have dedicated teams that if anything bad happens to somebody, um, they'll try and see if they were harassed or something on their online account. So most of the big companies now that hold a lot of personal data, like Facebook and uh, Google and that, they will have a dedicated department that's actually there to help the police um, in their inquiries. Anything else? Yep, Sorry. last one. If somebody was to break into a website like Facebook, um, now Facebook you can't do it because I know the guys there and they've been, but if there was another website that was set up brand new and it didn't really have a really good reputation, uh, maybe it was just some college project that somebody set up. Um, sure, Facebook was set up as a college project um, it just, uh, and then it just exploded, went all over the world. But originally, if you have, if you have a system like Facebook that, that has not been properly security tested, it is potentially possible for somebody to break into one of the servers and see what everybody's saying. Okay, that's it. So um, I'll stick around for the next hour. If anyone, if anyone has any questions, give me a shout. Thank you.